Well, so I did watch it. So um, this is the, the new James Wan horror film. As he said, is it a horror film or is it a spoof? So it begins in just unbelievably creaky, silly, boring fashion. Um, 1993, Gabriel um, escapes from an institution. And then we move to decades later, Seattle. Um, Madison is hit by her husband, who is then decapitated by a, a wraith. And then a whole bunch of other stuff happens and she's having dreams about the attacks and then the dreams mirror reality. Anyway, it goes like this. It goes plod, 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 plod. There's an awful lot. There's like this sub Ringu shadowy figure. There's this sub Bernard Herman stabby score. There's this sub Brian De Palma overhead shot. It's a shot when she walks through the house and like this. There's the sub everything. I've got an imaginary friend who's not an ima- not imaginary. There are the sub giallo Colour schemes, there's the sub Shutter Island, sub Gothic institution, the sub everything, oh, I've got amnesia. And even a plot which is sub one of the Omen sequels in which, you know, Fetus Paparicious features in the Omen sequel and this turns into a different message. So, and then there's a couple of jokes which just make it worse. And it's not particularly, it's not scary at all, not particularly gory and really quite plodding and, and, and you know, very, very humdrum. And then two thirds of the way through, it goes absolutely completely off the rails and i i came out of it thinking if only the whole movie had been at the same tone as the last 25 minutes the last 25 minutes is some of the most insane nuts <laughs> i mean as you said what on earth was going on so i think it's it's <laughs> i can imagine that you might get halfway through and think, oh, this is boring. I'm going to leave. Don't. <laughs> because, I mean, actually, I, I, I'm now, now, I, I'm just going to. You're now intrigued, right? Well, I just, well, I mean, what, what sort of thing are you talking, when you say it goes I, nuts. Well, I, okay, so there's a thing that happens in it that partly owes a debt to Harry Potter and partly owes a debt to the Omen 4, whichever it was, the re, the, the one with the, the one with the daughter and the thing. But I, I don't want to give it away because it is worth sitting through an hour and 10 minutes of tedium. And I mean, real proper boring nuts and bolts. I've seen this everywhere before tedium, before the film goes. OK, and now it's crazy. Town. <laughs> and honestly, I was I it was. Does I it make was, it better or does it make it worse? Well, it makes it means I mean, if it had just carried on being the thing that it was, there's, there's one line at the end, which is we need backup. Send the fruitcaking National Guard. And you go, yeah, exactly. If it wasn't for that last 25 minutes, it would be one of the most boringly forgettable films I've ever seen. But the last 25 minutes of it are just... And also they're made more insane by the fact that it's been so dull up until that point. It's just been so derivative. Okay. that When it goes absolute, you go, what? Matt, <laughs> Matt Tiley says, uh, just out of... Malignant. I do love a good horror. Sadly, Malignant this falls way one. short of that mark. It is yeah. some of the worst acting I've ever seen on the big screen and <laughs> yeah. is utterly, utterly ridiculous. I'd have walked out, but I live near the Bristol city ground and there was a match on, so we'd probably have struggled to get a parking space near my house. Complete tosh. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is it is all over the place and it is an absolute mess. And it's very funny that you didn't leave because you didn't want to get caught up in the football crowd. But don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is a good film. But what I'm saying is that when it finally decided to, you know, to put its boots on and go mad, it was like, oh, well, OK, good. Here we go. 25 minutes of totally bonkers. Daniel Tuck in Gloucester. I had the absolute joy of seeing James Wan's latest offering, Malignant, on opening night last Friday. The first half plays out, plays out like a relatively standard haunted house psychological trauma type movie, but come the reveal just before the final act, I was grinning from ear to ear for the whole of the rest of the running time. Yeah. What a crazy, like wonderful to- throwback to the unabashedly over-the-top horror movies we don't see enough of these days. It was camp funny, no holds barred uh, entertaining. Kudos to Warner Brothers for letting Wan make a movie like this. I hope he's given the opportunity to do more. Yeah. And I'd like to say, on, on the subject, if you were a podcast listener, you will have heard a brilliant email about how Aristotelian theory of dramatic coherence requires that when a reveal happens, it works because you kind of knew it all the time. I don't think James Wan has read that book. Okay, fair enough. 